As I've been listening carefully to my friends on the other side of the aisle. Um, Zika is truly a, an e epidemic. It's terrifying uh, young families all across the country who are worried that their babies might be born with a birth defect. Uh, we're working hard uh, to fund the um, creation of a vaccine, and the Center for Disease Control tells us that that's likely to happen in the next year and a half. But it takes a certain amount of creativity, Mr. President, for the Democrat senators to come to the floor and complain about not doing our job on Zika funding when three separate times the majority leader and Republicans have offered $1.1 billion in funding for Zika, and the Democratic senators have refused to allow a vote. Now, let me say that again. Republican senators have offered $1.1 billion in funding for Zika early in the summer at a time when mosquitoes are flying, and the Democratic senators have said, no, you can't even vote on it. $1.1 billion passed by the House we're ready to vote on it here, and they've said no. So let's be straight up about this. We regard it as an urgent problem. Three times we've brought it up. We're ready to vote again if that's what we need to do. Today, Mr. President, I'm here to talk about another issue that is also a real emergency. Later today, I will introduce, with other senators, the State Flexibility to Provide Affordable Health Options Act. This bill addresses a real emergency. It provides immediate relief to families who use their Obamacare subsidies to buy insurance on failing Obamacare exchanges for the 2017 health plan year. Here's an example. If you're a single mother in Memphis who gets an Obamacare subsidy to buy health insurance for your family, you might have read that Tennessee's insurance commissioner says that your rates may be more than 60% higher for the same health insurance policy for next year, 2017. You may be eligible for an Obamacare subsidy. This could soften the blow of some premium increases, but there's also a good chance that the insurance you currently may have will be gone by this November, two months from now, when you sign up for your insurance for next year, 2017. You will have to figure out how to stretch your subsidy dollars as your options shrink. Maybe the new plan options don't include your doctor in their network. So you'll have to pay higher copays for your office visits. Maybe you need to buy a new plan altogether with new doctors. And you can spend the new year trying to move all your records from your child's old doctor to your child's new doctor, if you can get an appointment. So this legislation will do two things for you and the nearly 11 million Americans who buy health insurance for themselves or their families on Obamacare exchanges. Number one, it gives states with a failing Obamacare exchange the authority to allow residents to use their Obamacare subsidy to purchase any health care plan of their choice, even those off the exchange for the 2017 plan year. This opportunity would be available in every single state. It will give governors the opportunity to step in if he or she determines this emergency relief is, quote, necessary to ensure that residents of the state have access to an adequate number of affordable private health insurance options in the individual or small group markets, unquote. So this bill means that the mother in Memphis can shop around for health insurance policy that meets her family's needs but is unavailable on the exchange in Tennessee. And now when she goes to pay for it, she can use the Obamacare subsidy currently limited to exchange plans. The second thing this bill does is this. If the state chooses to use this authority to allow residents to use subsidies outside of the exchange, the legislation will waive the Obamacare law's requirement that you must buy a specific health plan or pay a fine of as much as $2,000 for a family of four next year. In other words, if that mother can't find affordable insurance options that meet her family's needs, meaning a plan that covers the right doctors and services on the Obamacare exchange, then she doesn't have to waste her money or the taxpayer's money on a plan that she doesn't want or doesn't need. And she won't be threatened with paying a fine if she doesn't. The individual mandate and its penalty will be lifted. Without this emergency bill, Mr. President, she is locked into a failing exchange. 
The only place her subsidy works is the exchange. And in the words of Tennessee's insurance commissioner last week, Tennessee's exchange is, quote, very near collapse, unquote. Obamacare is unraveling at an alarming rate. In November, Americans in nearly one-third of the nation's counties will have only one insurance to choose from when they have to buy health insurance on their regional Obamacare exchange. And most Americans on the exchanges will face higher rates. In my home state of Tennessee, residents will see their rates increase between 44 and 62 percent on the average next year. So even for a healthy 40-year-old non-smoking Tennessean, with the lowest price silver plan on Tennessee's exchange, premiums increased last year to $262 a month. Next year, it's $333 a month. Tennessee had to take extreme measures to allow these increases because insurance companies told the state, if you don't let us file for rate increases, we'll have to leave. If that happened, Tennesseans might have had only one insurer to choose from. That's what's happening in states all over the country as Obamacare plans or rates get locked in for next year. According to the consulting firm Avalier Health, Americans buying insurance in one third of Obamacare exchange regions next year may have only one insurer to choose from. People buying on Obamacare exchanges will have only one insurance to choose from in the following states. Alaska, Alabama, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Wyoming, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. The same Kaiser Family Foundation report found that in a growing number of states, multiple insurers will have only one, multiple insurers, will, the states that now have multiple insurers, will have only one insurer selling policies in a majority of counties. Tennessee is one of those states. Last year, Tennesseans could choose Obamacare plans between at least two insurers in all 95 counties in our state. For next year, 2017, it's estimated that 60% of Tennessee's counties will have only one insurer offering Obamacare plans. North Carolina is experiencing the same thing. Next year, 90% of the counties in North Carolina are estimated to have only one insurer offering Obamacare plans, up from 23% last year. And there's a similar picture in West Virginia, Utah, South Carolina, Nevada, Arizona, Mississippi, Missouri, Florida. Just last week, the Concord Monitor in New Hampshire published an article with, the, with this headline, quote, Maine Health Insurance Co-op Leaves New Hampshire Market Reeling from Losses, unquote. That's their headline. The story goes on to describe how this health insurance plan will no longer be operating in New Hampshire after experiencing over $10 million in losses in the Obamacare exchange over just the first two quarters of this year alone. That move leaves more than 11,000 individuals in the Granite State looking for new health plans. The bill I'm introducing will not fix Obamacare for Americans. It is not a permanent solution, but it does give the mom in Memphis a real solution for next year, for 2017. And it lets her know we are on her side and that we haven't forgotten her and her family as we seek to repeal Obamacare and replace it with step-by-step -step reforms that transform the health care delivery system by putting patients in charge, giving them more choices, and reducing the cost of health care so that more people can afford it, which is precisely the alternative that Republicans offered in 2008, 9, and 10 when Obamacare was voted in. It also highlights the big structural change we will need to make in the near future to avoid a near collapse of our nation's health insurance market. Mr. President, Americans get their insurance, our insurance, through many different places, some from Medicare, some from Medicaid, most from their employers, but nearly 11 million buy their insurance through the exchanges. If the Obamacare policy isn't paying the higher premiums I just described, then you, the taxpayer, will, because a large portion of Obamacare premiums are subsidized with tax dollars. There's no excuse for having a failing insurance market where taxpayers are paying most of the bill and costs are so out of control that we may soon have a situation 
where no insurance company is willing to sell insurance on an Obamacare exchange. Where does that leave these 11 million Americans? Obamacare and its one-size-fits-all takeover of health insurance robbed states of their ability to provide access to affordable health plans in a way that made sense for their state populations and economies. Obamacare was supposed to create a marketplace where people would have more access to affordable private health insurance plans. Robust private market competition was supposed to spur innovative insurance design and help drive down costs. But just the opposite has happened, as those stuck in Obamacare are facing fewer and more expensive options. Long term, Americans should have the freedom to make their own choices about their families' health care needs. But short term, in November, nearly 11 million Americans need freedom from the exchanges, and this legislation that I will introduce later today with other senators will provide that immediately.